the keto on two dollars a day challenge so today uh, my ketones were 5.2 um, and I weighed in at 84.7 so over the four days I lost an entire kilo but I did feel dehydrated on, uh, this morning. So I don't think it was a proper replication of actual weight loss. I just believe it was partly dehydration. I'm going to go through some of the results and I know a lot of you are pretty keen to hear about this. I'll go through them day by day and sort of give my, give my overview of what I thought of it, uh, if it's beneficial for you. Uh, and if you could do something like this, would you do it on $2 a day? Uh, would you go a little bit higher or lower or whatnot? My ketones on day one, they were 0 0.8. And on day two, they were 1.9. Day three, they were 3.8. Day four, they were 4.8. And then today, day five, they were 5.2. So the biggest jump was in between day two and day three. Interestingly, I, um, on day one and two, I had no salt. So I went from 0 0.8 up to 1.9, which is a 1.1 jump. And then from day two to day three, 1.9 millimoles per liter jump. That's a pretty big jump. Um, after that, I started introducing salt to my diet all the way up to 5.2. Uh, I started to feel more alert as I got past day three and onwards. So day one and day two, I felt relatively foggy in the head. I've never been, or I've never tested my ketones right up to 5.2. So that's pretty interesting to be there. And I'm probably still around about there at the moment as well. Now, mind you, I'm testing in the mornings. So your ketone levels generally are lower in the mornings. I'll go through some of the stages of ketone levels for you, just to know that where each day was when I was gauging. So for athletic performance weight loss, you generally wanna be above 0 0.5 millimoles per liter. Uh, when you get above 1.5 and all the way up to three to 3.5 really, that's when you start experiencing mental acuity, right? So if you wanna be quite mentally alert, you can relatively easily keep your ketones above above 1.5. If you want to be on the ketogenic diet for therapeutic reasons, being above three and being below six or in that range, anywhere in that range is really beneficial. And there's really good scientific evidence to say epilepsy, diabetes, polycystic ovary syndrome, so PCOS, heartburn, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. There is very good scientific research to say that being in between three and six millimoles per liter is a good place to be for treating those types of things. There's also reasonable evidence to suggest that higher ketone levels, like the ones in the therapeutic range, um, can also help with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, dementia, schizophrenia, bipolar, narcolepsy, and other sleep disorders. I suggest you do your own research into those uh, different items that I listed before. $2 a day is not healthy. It is not healthy uh, from a micronutrient perspective. It might be good. There was no magnesium in my diet. There was hardly any salt apart from the bacon. There was a lot of minerals that I was probably getting very deficient in. There was no variance. There was no variance in color. There was no variance in the different types of protein. There was no variance in vegetables. In fact, there was no vegetables at all because I couldn't afford it. I don't suggest this from a health perspective, from a nu nutritional health perspective, this is not a good diet to do. To be in a position where you need to be in therapeutic ketone level and you don't have much money or you are living at the poverty line, this diet works very, very well for that. What I'm trying to do with this series of videos is I'm trying to simulate poverty. There are 3 million people in Australia who live below the poverty line. The poverty line in Australia is gauged by the median wage and anyone who has 50% less than the median wage, which is usually about less than $400 a week to live off per, per adult, right? So, and there's children involved in this. So I think there's 730,000 children also living below the poverty line. There are a lot of people who might be overweight, might be suffering from any of these diseases and could benefit enormously from being on the ketogenic diet. There is a charity behind this that does $2 a day in Australia and they are called the Oak Tree Foundation. I have a link below to anyone who wants to donate to the Oak Tree Foundation and they help poverty stricken people in Australia. They're a really good cause. I've got the link below. Donate if you feel like something that you feel strongly about. 
Keto Connects do a really good video on living on keto on five dollars a day and they do that in America so and they have all the meal plans and everything on their website and I'll link that below as well okay so I want to talk about weight loss so for me I would usually eat 2600 calories per day that is what's based on my weight me being a male me uh, doing exercise probably two to three times a week being the height that I am so that's the average calories for a person my height is probably what I'd eat generally on a normal day. Having 1,300 calories was a 50% reduction. Now I don't recommend that for weight loss. I don't re recommend having a reduction that drastic um, because what it does is it puts your body into stress mode, right? So I only lost a kilo over the five days. For 50% of my calories to only lose a kilo is not much at all and I have felt over the past couple of days that my heart's been racing. I, I feel like I have been put into a stressful situation. If you are doing the ketogenic diet for weight loss, you wanna be reducing your calories by five to 10% and it's something that you wanna carry over month after month. It's something that you wanna do consistently that will have the most beneficial impact. Okay, so I wanna talk about the actual recipe that I did. What I didn't explain on the first video was how long I kept the recipe in the oven for. So I put it in at 180 degrees, which is 355 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was in there for half an hour. What I thought about eating them every single day, look, by the second day, I was pretty over the taste of eating the same meal every single day. If you are doing this, you might be able to find something that tastes a little bit better uh, and still be in the $10 for the five days range. To be honest, by today, I really couldn't stomach it. There was something about it that just eating the same meal every single day, and especially by the time I was eating all three portions in one day, that it really got to me. So I started adding salt, pepper, I started adding a little bit of whatever seasoning I had in the cupboard. It just wouldn't mask the taste, and I don't think it was the actual taste of the recipe, I think it was just the fact that I was eating the same thing every single day. What I've learned from this video is that I do really, really love food and I really love the, the choice that um, food can bring to you. So I wanted to talk about why I went to three meals a day, to two meals a day, down to one meal a day. So I started off with three meals a day because that's just generally what I do. Um, and they're, they're sort of like the normal eating times for normal society, normal everyday life, right? So I went down to two meals a day. So I ate breakfast and lunch. I ate two portions for lunch, just kept the one for breakfast, and then fasted at night time. And that worked, but I wanted to try the one meal a day. And what I found was, especially eating 1,300 calories, was that it's a really big portion to eat all in one go. And then by the time dinner rolls around, you're quite hungry. Yes, I was eating 50% less calories, and that probably contributes to that, but eating one meal a day triggers lots and lots of mental decisions. So you get to lunchtime and you go, I don't know, like, I don't know if I had enough to eat for breakfast. Do I need to eat something else? I knew that I could only eat that amount of food. The, that mindset was still going through my brain every single normal meal time, more so than just eating two meals a day. So that's very interesting, intermittent fasting, was easier than doing one meal a day. If you're doing one meal a day and you are around other people who also eat lunch and dinner or whatever time that of day it is that you're not eating, it's very hard to resist and it's very hard to say, okay, I've had enough for today because I ate it all for breakfast. If I was to eat 2,600 calories all in one meal, I would probably feel sick. So the wrap up for the entire thing, uh, would I recommend $2 a day to anyone doing the ketogenic diet. My honest opinion is no. I would not recommend do, doing $2 a day. I feel like if you needed to, and you needed to be in a therapeutic range of ketones, and you didn't have enough money, then that to doing $2 a day is perfect for that. If you are doing a low income ketogenic diet, then doing $5 a day is much, much more beneficial. The cost benefit, versus the health benefits of that, I don't see any point. $5 a day might be beneficial if you uh, really need to stick to the ketogenic diet and you really don't have enough money to get things like avocados or all of the expensive things on the ketogenic like salmon, 
or anything uh, fresh that's very high in good quality fats those items tend to be relatively expensive but if you're doing the ketogenic diet and you're doing things like mince and cheese and uh, dairy cream butter all those sorts of things definitely a viable option on five dollars a day for anyone who's earning a low income potentially a good takeaway from this for me was that cutting out snacking was a very important lesson for me because if you're not eating enough in the one meal and you are snacking in between and then you're having three meals a day plus whatever snacks you're having you're constantly slightly bumping up your insulin levels uh, and your glucose response to whatever food that you're eating and I, I just don't think snacking is very good I think if you're eating big enough meals throughout the day you don't need to eat in between then so snacking on a ketogenic diet I don't think is very beneficial for weight loss if you're trying to build muscle, I don't think it's a very good idea either. Keeping it to three meals a day or keeping it to two meals a day, I think is the way to go. If you do want to take it to one meal a day, you will probably struggle to fit your entire day's worth of calories all into one meal. I would be interested to see how uh, I could fit 2,600 calories all in one day and what the benefits of doing nearly a 23 hour fast would be. Uh, that's it for me. This has been a really awesome journey or a really awesome challenge to do. And thanks for everyone who's been watching. I really appreciate it. Share it with your friends. If someone needs to be in a nutritional state of ketosis, maybe this set of videos is the perfect thing for them. It's purely trying to get the most caloric benefit from the amount of ingredients that I could afford. My name's Aaron, this is Fat For Weight Loss. If you want to subscribe below for more videos like this one, uh, comment below and let me know what you think and I will see you next time. I'm sure I'll have plenty more videos coming. Thanks for watching.